Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks, and you're checking out a tutorial for ADSRSounds.com. So in this video, it's going to be two, it's going to be two parts, kind of. It's going to all be one video, but we're going to be looking at how to make a sound in Massive, and then talk about some cool post processing that you can do to that sound. So let me play this little demo for you real quick. All right, so as you can tell, most likely from the demo that this is going to be looking at Future House. Uh, some of these techniques will be good for like Future Bass and those sort of things. But yeah, I wanted to talk about this for two reasons or do this tutorial for two reasons. Uh, the bass sound in Massive itself is a very, very good starting point for for uh, Future Future House and even Deep House if you change up the, the oscillators and the wavetables. And then also I wanted to talk about the processing that I have on the sound because I stumbled across the really cool processing trick for Future House basses, so I thought I would share it with you guys. All right, so these top two tracks are in Massive. This first one is the main sound. This is a sub bass. And then kick, claps, panned out left and right, and then this little vocal, vocal chop section. All right, so let's get into recreating the main Massive sound. So I have a new dry sound in Massive pulled up. So we'll just play this and I'll turn the kick down a little bit while we make the sound. All right, so this actual sound's really easy to make and you don't have to use these oscillators. Uh, like I said, this is a really good template for coming up with a cool Future House bass sound. All right, so in oscillator one, I'm going to choose, I like using some of the groan tables. I'm going to use groan three. I'm going to change it to a format table table type or, or blending mode and turn the wave tail position down to a little bit about halfway. I just, I'm just doing this because I like this tone more. All right, and then pitch it all the way down to negative 64. Weird things happen at negative 64 and massive. A uh, friend who's a sound designer actually t t told me like, hey, have you messed around with tuning things down to negative 64? And I had not, and it can get some really crazy results. All right, so that is what's happening in oscillator one. I'm gonna want this to go to our second filter. And so I'm gonna slide this filter slider down to F2. And now let's make sure that oscillator two is activated and I'm going to load up another grown three and the wave tail position is going to be a little bit opposite of oscillator one. I'm going to go out to above 50%. And what we're going to do now, let's turn up uh, the amp on this so we can hear it. And the intensity, I'm going to turn down and keep this on spectrum. And pitch this down to negative 12. And then we're going to want this to go to filter one once we get all that set up. So that's not going to have an effect on the sound right now, but it will in a little bit. All right, oscillator three, I'm actually going to use a weird one that kind of harkens back to more of a deep house vibe. It's these effects chords wavetables, and this has a real interesting sound. It's a really popular one from Massive. Let's turn the amp up. Right, so that's kind of that deep house one. So I'm going to pitch this up to positive 24, turn the wavetail position up all the way. And I'm going to turn the amp down to about maybe 55, 60%. And I want this going all into our filter one once we get that set up. All right, if I bring in the other oscillators, it sounds really weird, right? Um, the modulation oscillator is doing a lot to the sound. So make sure that's activated. And we are going to apply ring modulation to the second oscillator and the ring modulation amount we're going to go up to about a little bit above halfway and pitch it up. So let's listen to what this does in isolation to our second oscillator. So it's bringing out a little bit of nasal quality to my ear and then let's go to our phase and we're going to apply that to our first oscillator which is that really weird low kind of detuned all the way down to negative 64. So let's listen to what this does. And now the phase on this, I'm going to crank up to like 75, 80%. Right, so it's getting even weirder. All 
right? But bear with me. It will turn into a cool sound at the end. And then I'm going to activate the noise and turn it up to about halfway on the amp and a little bit above halfway on the color. Because I like that kind of metal sound to it. And now let's go to our insert one and load up the sign shaper. So this had a cool quality and a cool, it, dr it drove some of the harmonics of this sound a little bit better. All right, let's go to the voicing tab really quick. And we are going to give this two voices. I am now going to activate the pitch cutoff and I'm going to detune this. So keep it on centered, keep it on one. I'm going to detune it a good amount. And I'm going to activate the pan position and have it just a little bit past mono. And then choose a monophonic mode depending on whatever you're, whatever you're playing. I, I used uh, the mono rotate and I had it on always for trigger. All right, so it still sounds pretty weird, but let's go to our envelopes and get those dialed in. Envelope four, we're gonna go there first because it's tied to the amp mod, so I kinda wanna rein in the sound a little bit so I can start to hear what the end result's gonna be. So what I like doing with Future House basses, and I'm not the only one who does this, a lot of Future House DJs and producers do it, they give the sound a lot of release, so there's something for the sidechain compression to really latch onto, because you're playing kind of these short, plucky uh, passages. So we're going to turn the release up a good amount, turn the level down all the way, keep the decay where it is, turn the attack down all the way. And just that's going to be the envelope that's tied to the amp mod. So the, I, what I was playing around with and what I've been messing around with in Massive a little bit is certain wavetables with longer sustains start to sound weird because the wavetable, I think, introduces some wavetables and you, the way if you combine them, like the three that we have going on or the two in our oscillators, it, the, the frequencies and harmonics get kind of wonky. But when you shorten the decay, the, the level and the sustain of the decay, and then just boost the release, it kind of reins in the nasty harmonics. So that really cleaned up the sound. All right, so I'm going to go up to filter one now, and I'm going to select a low pass four, and then in filter two, I'm going to select a scream filter type. So for the slider here for serial parallel, I want it kind of in the middle, and we'll play around with this as we go. Leave the mix in the middle and make sure the volume's up for both uh, the filter one and filter two. So then if you turn up the cutoff to filter one, you get an effect, and then filter two. Now remember, the so sound that's going to filter two is just our first oscillator, which is this format one. So that's why I'm using it with the scream. It kind of plays nicely with the format to get that crazy sound we just heard. So for the cutoff of filter one, I'm going to turn this down almost all the way, make sure the resonance is down. For filter two, I'm going to crank that up, the cutoff up, crank the scream up. And it's gonna sound really weird right now, but we're gonna bring back in filter one with an envelope to further control the nasty frequencies that were kind of coming from our oscillators. So turn the attack all the way down. Turn the level down pretty much all the way. Turn the release up a whole heck of a lot. So this little line right here is kind of in between trig zero reset. Keep it on gate for the mode type and keep the decay about halfway. Now take the crosshair for envelope one and modulate this out pretty much all the way. And now I'm going to turn the resonance down for the scream filter. And you can play around with the blend between the filters by moving the serial parallel slider. I just want a little buzz coming through because it kind of helps the, like I said, that side chain compression kind of makes it a little bit more interesting. All right, so now let's go to our effects slot. I like putting on the dimension expander because it helps widen the sound. And you can, of course, do that to taste. And I've also had an instance of just the coursing effect or the course inside of Massive on this sound. I had the dry wet about halfway, the rate a little bit under halfway, offset and depth I didn't really touch. All right, and then the EQ, What did, I don't re exactly remember what I did for the EQ, but let's just boost the high, maybe mess with the frequency so it's a bit more nasal. And I'm gonna turn down the low shelf a little. All right, so here's the sound with the drums. Okay, 
Okay, so it's so it still sounds a little bit weird because those high frequency kind of the, the the second filter is creating this high frequency. And it's letting that through because the envelope's not controlling that. But I like that because then when I put the reverb on, and we're going to talk about the post-processing, it adds a little bit more high-frequency content to the sound, which, of course, any sound that's going to have more of the frequencies represented in the audio spectrum is going to sound bigger to our ear. So if this was like a drop, that becomes helpful. All right, now the second thing that I did was I made a new instance of, of a Massive, and I just layered this with a sub. I ran out of oscillators, obviously, with that sound. We used all three. So what I did was I just made a new sound, loaded up a sine square, turned it to sine, pitched it down to negative 12. Right? And then the reason I did this in a new instance, and I didn't have the release as high, kept the attack a little bit above zero, is because it's not going through any of the, the S-shaper or the effects. And then you layer these together, but what I did was I changed massive to a mono mode. So then my sub bass is just a mono sound. So then the those two patches are kind of acting as one. All right, so there is the sound pretty much remade. So if you guys want to remake that, you can. And before we get into the processing, I do want to show you that it's really cool to just play around with the different oscillators. For instance, if we take out the color, I'm sorry, I still have the color in. I took out the first grain, the format. Like I said, this is a great template just to kind of play around with. Like this is going to be a completely different sound now. But it's an equally cool sound. So I really like that template for messing around with Future House basses. So let's talk about the actual processing that you can apply. I will, we'll apply it to the sound that's a little bit different. All I did was change a couple of the oscillators just to show you that it's a really effective tool to kind of just play around once you have your bass line in. Alright, so we'll see how this plays with the processing because it's a little bit of a different sounding bass. So what I'm going to do is pop this up here and we'll just copy it over. So if you guys don't know what uh, FabFilter is, it's a great company. They make um, some really nice plugins. If you've never heard of them, I suggest you check them out. They have a distortion plugin, saturation and distortion plugin that is just it's really nice, and I applied a little bit of that to the sound. So let's look at what's going on with this. I just a preset that I tweaked inside of Saturn, which is a uh, distortion module. So it's called Fat Tape and Comp. So it's applying a little bit of co of compression. So on, off. So it's not doing a whole lot, right? It's just adding some presence. And then I added a really cool plugin called Vengeance, I can never say this word, Smear Shifter. Let's listen to how this sounds. So on the original sound. So we can go back to the original sound from the demo, but that's what this this Smear Shifter does. I wanted to show you what it actually, how it affects that dry sound. Is It's a really cool plugin. It's made by Vengeance and there are other plugins that do this, but what's happening is you'll see down here it says FFT size. This is basically a pitch shifting plugin, but there's different ways in which pitch shifting plugins actually shift the pitch. Some of them use, use grains, some of them use a time stretching algorithm, and this one uses a fast Fourier transformer. That's what FFT stands for, and it's, it's handling the sound in a different way. I could spend a whole tutorial talking about that, but what it does is it it just it's it's a smoother sound it almost has an additive synthesis sound to my ear which is really cool um so yeah look into your pitch shifting your favorite pitch shifting plugin because some of them have that mode where you can change it to an fft but what it does to the sound is is actually crazy it really changes the the, the sonic scope of the sound so that's with saturn 
we'll turn Saturn off and just have the smear shifter on this pitch shifter. It's a great sound. So yeah, check out your pitch shifting plugins because I know Logic comes with one. You might be able to get a similar sound, but it is very cool. Um, and then finally, I, I did a trick where I just threw on some reverb with a tempo synced pre-delay on an aux send, added a little bit of sidechain compression using the LFO tool, and that's what we get with that big full sound to make this. Yes, yeah, so like I said, it's a very fun preset to make. Uh, if you guys follow the tutorial, you should be able to make it. It's really easy to actually recreate. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know below. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. As always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.